Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed, blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
able to be here and that I'm able to be in the presence of the Lord, not just to be in a church environment. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay. It's okay. We'll continue on with this. Let me say that I'm a child of God and I thank God for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly to stand in front of you and minister. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's welcome those that uh, are joining us for the very first time. Uh, we thank the Lord for them. And I must say that we love you with the love that the Lord has given unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Even those that we haven't been with them for quite some time, welcome in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. He put a song of praise in his heart of mine. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good. Whatever way like that may be getting now. Hallelujah. Yeah, even if you get into traditional, you are there. Even if you get into international, you are there. Even if you get into classic, you are there. Hallelujah. Praising the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. Let's go to the word of God without any waste of time. We have been talking under the thing, real keys to God's blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are continuing for that from that um, a, a theme of really keys to God's blessings. Uh, we are going to start reading from Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, verse number 1, a scripture that we, we, we visited uh, on Friday as well. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, verse number 1. Those with microphones next to them, may they assist us in reading. Be careful about going to the temple. It is better to go there to learn than to offer sacrifices as foolish people do. People who don't know right from wrong. Different vision? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Any other version? Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Hallelujah. So we are busy talking about the issue of blessings that the Lord has promised us. Now, where we are reading, the word of God is warning us that whenever we come into the house of the Lord or we come into the presence of God, we must watch our steps because the Lord is not pleased with people that give foolishly that offer sacrifices before the Lord without considering what they do. Are you with me? Remember, we've been talking about the issue of blessings that are attached upon giving. Blessings that are, are attached upon offering or sacrifices before the Lord. Now, where we are reading, the word of the Lord tells us that the Lord is not pleased with the sacrifice of fools. What do fools do? Fools do not care about what they do. The word of the Lord says that they do not consider that they are evil. 
They just offer before the Lord, forgetting that whatsoever we bring unto the Lord, whatsoever we offer before the Lord, for us to receive the word that is supposed to be given unto us, that particular offering must meet the standard of an acceptable offering. Are you with me? So whenever we are sacrificing unto the Lord, whenever we are offering unto the Lord, for us to receive the blessing that we ought to receive, we must meet the standard of an acceptable offering. Otherwise, we are going to offer unto the Lord, but not receive the blessing that we should be receiving. Why? Because we do not meet the standard of an acceptable offering. Are you with me? That is why Jesus in Matthew 6 spoke specifically that when you pray, you must pray in a certain manner. You must go into your secret closet. There pray unto your father rather than praying openly so that you may be seen by people. Because if you do that, God is not going to reward you. But if you go and pray in secret, God is going to answer you. Are you with me? So God, for everything that he has put in place or in store for us, there are terms and conditions that we must meet for us to receive that particular thing. Are you with me? Please, let's read Proverbs 26, verse number 2. Proverbs 26, verse number 2. Curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. They are like birds that fly by and never settle. Repeat. Curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you hear that? Curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. They are like birds that just fly by without settle. In other words, if you do not deserve any case, no matter who may try to curse you, that particular case won't come to pass. Are you with me? Yeah. It doesn't matter who that person may be. May be a mighty man of God that is anointed so much. But if you do not deserve that curse, he may curse you from sunset, I mean from, from sunrise to sunset, it won't come to pass. Again, the opposite is true about blessings. I may proclaim blessings. Somebody may, press, may proclaim blessings upon you from morning to sunset. There won't be any blessing that will come upon your life if you do not deserve that blessing. Are you with me? And it doesn't matter who that person may be. Could be a prophet, a prophetess, an archbishop. Whatsoever title that you may attach to that particular person, if you do not deserve the blessing, you will not get it. The same applies to the curse. If you do not deserve the curse, you will not be cursed. Hallelujah. So you need to know that just as birds that fly without landing, so is a curse that is undeserved. It will never set over your life. The opposite is also true. Blessings that you don't deserve, you will never get them. The Lord will not bless you if I say God bless you while you don't deserve to be blessed. Are you with me? After all, it is the Lord that blesses. Go to Numbers 23, verse 19 and 20, so that you can see what I'm talking about explicitly clear. Numbers 23, 19 and 20. God is not like 
men who lie. He is not a human who changes his mind. Whatever he promises, he does. He speaks and it is done. I have been instructed to bless. And when God blesses, I cannot call it back. Hallelujah. Now, where we are reading, we find the issue of Balaam, who was a prophet of the Lord. Now, Balaam, as a prophet of the Lord, was approached by Balak, a certain king of Gentiles upon that time. Now, this king approached Balaam as a prophet of the Lord because he saw that whatsoever nation that Balaam cursed, it would be cursed. Whatever nation that Balaam blessed, it would be blessed. Why? Because Balaam was a prophet of the Lord. You understand? Now, this king approached him and offered him some reward for him to come and curse Israel. Now, where we are reading, it was after Bala. Balaam has tried so many times to curse Israel. But he failed. Why? Because God was not in favor of that. Are you with me? In other words, God did not approve the case that he was trying to invoke upon Israel. That is why he says here, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he, or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Here he speaks about the faithfulness of God, that God, whatsoever he says, that he does. He doesn't change from it. Then in verse number 20 he says, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed. I cannot reverse it. Do you hear that? God has blessed. I cannot reverse it. There is no person that can bless you if God has not blessed you. It must be God first that must bless you. For you to receive whatsoever blessing that people may proclaim or declare upon your life. We are talking about what? Real keys to blessings. You need God's approval first for that particular blessing to come to pass. Without it, let me tell you, this man changed to three different places trying to build altars from one place to the other so that he could offer a sacrifice before the Lord and then try to curse Israel. But because God is the one who is the real blesser, are you with me? Was not in favor of that. He tried. And whenever he spoke, only a blessing would come out of his mouth. Are you with me? And then the king asked him, why is it that I have asked you so many times to curse these people, but every time you are opening your mouth, you speak a blessing upon them? And then he responded, I have, re I have received a command to bless. And the Lord has blessed. I cannot reverse it. I do want to do what you want me to do. But I am not able and I can't. Why? Because God has blessed. Are you with me? Real keys to God's blessings. So do not be fooled. Do not be misled. You know when we read Galatians 6, 7, the word of God says that do not be fooled. Do not be misled. God cannot be mocked. 
Whatsoever a man sow, that he will reap. Are you with me? We can come. All of us here. Take a blessing upon you. If God has not blessed you, you're going to continue. Without receiving that blessing. The same applies if we come here and try to say, You are cursed. We proclaim and declare every kind of curse that you may think of. If God has not cursed, if you do not deserve that curse, it won't happen. Even if it could be an old lady with some gray hair trying to curse you. Because see, we, especially as Africans, I do not know where we found it. But yay, you is an old lady cursing you. No. That curse if it's undeserved, will not happen. I will then. But if you deserve it, it will happen. Just like a flying spark that flies without landing, so is an undeserved case. It will never land or come to pass upon your life. Again, if we try to bless you, even if we can bring some anointing, be it water, oil, put it around you. Say you must bar, you must part with it. Put some chains. These are chains of blessing, necklace of, of blessings. Like an example, not that we have that. We don't have that. Hallelujah. Even if we can do that and say, all the blessings in the blood of tonight, you are blessed coming in and blessed going out. Whatsoever you touch shall be prosperous. The Lord shall protect you. The Lord, it will not happen if you don't deserve it. Are you with me? Actually, you don't even need a man to bless you if God has blessed you. Because God doesn't need anyone's approval whenever he does something. He has given us an honor of telling us or informing us as his people about things before they come to pass. Not that he needs our approval. That is why in Amos it says that the Lord does nothing without revealing it to his ministers or prophets first. But not to mean that he needs their approval. No. He's just, just given them an honor. Out of his sovereignty. You know God chooses to do something. Not because you deserve it. Not because there is something specific about you. It's one of those things. But otherwise, he doesn't need anybody's approval. Are you with me? That is good, you see? Because even us, even if it's a man of God, it's a minister, it's a prophet, at times, we can go astray just like Balaam, who was a prophet of God, appointed to be a prophet upon the nation of Israel. Because of material things, he was bought. Are you with me? So even for whatsoever reason, if a minister or a pastor or a man of God may decide to invoke a curse upon your life, you don't deserve it. It won't happen. But if you deserve it, it is surely going to come. Are you with me? It is surely going to come if you deserve it. Now, let's continue. Verse Samuel, chapter number 15, verse 14 to 15. 
First Samuel chapter 15, verse 14 to 15. But someone said, What then is this beating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul, said, Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spent the best of the sheep and cattle to, to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Before I expand on this scripture, open uh, Romans 12, 1 then. Romans 12, 1. Don't close the summary, we're going there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So then, my brothers and sisters, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Hallelujah. Now, Apostle Paul is speaking to the Church of Romans, speaking to us, me and you now. Because of God's mercy, the mercy that God has shown unto us, he is saying, we need to respond in this particular fashion. What is it? That we offer our bodies as living sacrifices before the Lord that are holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. I've said this so many times, that before you can offer any other kind of sacrifice before the Lord, for it to be acceptable, the Lord God must accept you first. Are you with me? Be it that I'm offering worship in terms of singing. Before the Lord can acknowledge and accept that worship that I'm offering, the Lord must first accept me first. Are you with me? Now, with the issue of Saul here in the book of 1 Samuel, we were reading, he was instructed by God, go and kill or destroy everything in the nation of, 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 of the Amalekites, I believe. Go and destroy everything. Yes, Amalekites. Go and destroy everything. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are flocks. All of it, including their kings, destroyed. That was the instruction from God. Now, what happened? Saul and his people, when he arrived there, he saw that there were sheep and cows and goats there that were fed. And then he said, This was they did not deserve to die. Are you with me? All that which he seemed that okay, this one seems to be fit for death. Maybe they were skinny, not so fat. They killed them. But they kept. Why is doing that? They make themselves to be unacceptable before God. Are you with me? That is why now the prophet Samuel is meeting Saul and asking him in verse number 13, have you done what the Lord sent you to do? Samuel said, Yes, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. That was, I mean, Saul's response to Samuel. I have done what God instructed me to do. And then Samuel said, what is the pleading that I am hearing? 
What is this sound that I am hearing around you? Because I hear sound of pretty sheep and lowing crickets. Why am I hearing that sound then? He said, These ones, we and the people decided that we are going to offer them before the Lord. Are you with me? Decided that we are going to offer them before the Lord. When the Lord had spoken clear, destroy everything. Destroy everything. Many times in our lives, there are certain things when God says, leave everything, destroy everything, that you're like, I, this one is worth it. To be destroyed. But this one, I can't destroy it. I still have some good use for it. This one is still going to help me to achieve something. When the Lord God has said, destroy everything. Now let's continue to verse number 21. I mean, verse number, let's, let's go to verse number 22 and 23. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat offerings. 23. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Hallelujah. You hear that? In verse 22, Samuel is saying, Does the Lord delight in burnt sacrifices and offer? Is that what is most important to the Lord? Oh, to obey. What is it that the Lord values so much? Is it what I am doing for the Lord? Perhaps you are preaching like I am preaching. Whatsoever role that you may be playing in the kingdom of the Lord. Is that what the Lord values much? Remember, as a nation of Israel, they had to offer sacrifices to the Lord every now and then. Are you with me? Just like me and you are offering sacrifices unto the Lord every now and then. They were doing the same thing. But now their focus was more on the sacrifices and offerings than in obeying God. Do you hear it? That is where they went wrong. That is why now the Lord is saying the Lord takes pleasure in obedience more than it does with sacrifices. The Lord delights in people that Listen to God. Remember when I spoke about the issue of obedience, I said that obedience is simply listening through actions. Are you with me? That is what the Lord wants from us. I love you, Lord. Lord, 
wants to see that in action. That is why Jesus said, those that love me will keep my commandment. Are you with me? They will obey my words. Those that love me. Not that they will go around declaring and say that we love the Lord. After all, the people that are outside that are, do not care about the Lord may say that they love God. Are you with me? But the Lord is not looking for that kind of love. The Lord wants to see the love that we have for Him being demonstrated. That is why even himself, he did not speak much about it, but he demonstrated it. John 3, 16, he loved the word so much that he gave. The word of God goes on to say that while we were still sinners, he died for us. What was that? Demonstration of his love. The word of the Lord says that scarcely will a righteous man die for a good person. But nonetheless, the Lord died for us while we were still sinners. He wants to see us demonstrating the love that we have for Him. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Then in verse number 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. The first thing that the Lord speaks about is rebellion. If you rebel against God's command, the Lord says that you are not different from someone that is practicing witchcraft or divination. Are you with me? If you are a child of the Lord, you are born again, somebody. You accepted the Lord. But yet, you live a rebellious life. You are busy pointing out at people that are witches down there, outside, witchcraft, what what, traditional doctors, what what. Hey, that one, that one. The Lord is saying that you are a witch too. Are you with me? The only difference between that witch and you is that that one is the one that flies by night <laughs> on a broom. Are you with me? You on the other day and me if we decide to live a rebellious life who are the ones that simply disregard God's command. Are you with me? And let me tell you, the Lord ordered that anyone who practices witchcraft, divination, so come in Israel, that person must be killed. Are you with me? That is how abominable this thing was before the Lord and is still. Are you with me? Of witchcraft. So, when you look at the issue of being rebellious before the Lord, think along those terms that this is so evil before the Lord to the extent that the Lord so that any person that does such was not fit to live. The other part, 
stubbornness is not different from iniquity and idolatry. What is it that so showed to prove that you are stubborn? So instead of admitting and acknowledging that we have sinned before the Lord. Instead, he tried to give reasons as to why they kept those animals. Why they decided to spare those that they spared. Why is it that they did not kill them? Are you with me? That is why the Lord said this one is so stable. Are you with me? He doesn't want to admit that he has sinned. And on top of that, stubborn people cling so much to their views or opinions. Are you with me? To the extent that it becomes an idol on its own. They worship that thing. That is why it is hard for them to give it away. I will make, or to give in. And then the Lord is saying that stubbornness is as the sin of idolatry. Now let me say this. When the Lord of, when the word of the Lord speaks about works of the flesh, it speaks about wrath, anger, jealousy, etc. Works of the flesh. If you are going to say, in my family, we are short-tempered, people know that you don't mess up with us. You are a child of God. You will never be delivered from that spirit. Are you with me? For you to be delivered from that spirit, you must admit that this is an evil spirit that resides within me. And I need deliverance from it. Then you will find deliverance. But as long as you say, hey, everyone knows that you don't mess up with the the Zulis, the Gosses, the whosoever, the Shangers, whosoever, the Mozepes, you don't mess up. You are going to remain that way. If you are going to say, I am this way, I am created this way, you are only up to that particular thing. And the only time you are going to receive deliverance is the day you will say that this is an evil thing and I do not want it in my life anymore. Anything that derails you from worshipping God, I do not care even if I can say that even your great grandfather was the best. Your grandfather, your father, even your aunt is like that. You need deliverance. Are you with me? Up until you admit that you need deliverance, you will never be delivered. This also speaks to things that we consider as our weakness. This is my weakness. Everybody knows that I'm like this. <laughs> Up until you begin to disown, identify that particular thing as an evil thing because it is evil. 
It ought not to be in you. Ah, we know this one. You must watch whenever you, 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 you watch yourself. You must, you, you, don't, don't, don't just speak anyhow. <laughs> it's the get angered. That is not of God. That spirit is not of God. Are you with me? For you to be delivered and not hurt. I've got an evil spirit in me. And I need the Lord to help me. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. But you won't up until you acknowledge that this is an evil spirit. While we're here in the morning, Google said that there is a lecture of his who is proudly gay. He said that um, his father, I think, is a priest or what, what. So they tried to pray for him. And he said, even if you can fast. <laughs> I will be, I'm not going to change. He told them that, even if you can fast. I'm not going to change. And that person will never be delivered. Even if you can fast. Up until he begins to acknowledge that this is an evil thing in me. Disown that spirit. Are you with me? Disown that spirit. Then deliverance will come. The same applies to anything that you may have. It's my weakness. It's my weakness. It's my weakness. It's going to remain yours. Up until you disown it. Now, let's continue. In Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Hallelujah. You see where we are reading. Number one, we are told that, by the way, the Lord can hear. Are you with me? In other words, these people, the Israelites, were complaining. Why is it that we are asking for healing? Why is it that we are praying, but the Lord does not hear us? How is it that they saw that the Lord didn't hear them? Because their prayers were unanswered. Are you with me? They did not receive the responses that they were looking for. And then the Lord spoke and said, by the way, there is nothing wrong with me. It's not that my hand is too short that it cannot heal. No, my ear down for it to heal. But the problem is with I want to answer you because I have committed myself in your word that in my way that when you pray, I will answer you. Are you with me? When you call unto me, I will answer you. That's God committing Himself. But now the Lord is not able to do that. What is it that hinders the Lord from doing that? It's the people that are offering prayer before the Lord. It's the people that are looking for healing from the Lord. How? Through their iniquities. Through their sins. 
Why am I talking about the issue of prayer? Because prayer is also a sacrifice that you offer unto God. Are you with me? When you are praying, you are offering sacrifice unto God. Be it whether it's a personal prayer or you are praying on behalf of other people, it's a sacrifice unto the Lord. Go to Revelations. Revelations 8, verse 2 and 4. So that you can see what I'm talking about. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. The smoke of the burning incense went up with the prayers of God's people from the hands of the, of the angels standing before God. You hear that? And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. That was verse number two. And then in verse number three, another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. What is an incense? You know, you know an incense, right? You know, you know an incense. Those things that they at times they they they, they, they burn in your home if you have been they are in traditional home or whatsoever they they burn in order to, to chase evil spirits. Yeah, it's more like dry something once I do not know how it looks like. Whether it's the same thing wherever you go, but that's it anyway. It's it's bent so that they can appease the spirits, whether they want to talk to the ancestors or whether they want to talk to yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just to communicate with they they, they bend those things. Now where we are, we are told that this angel was given an incense that he should offer it with the prayers. Of all saints upon the golden earth, which was before the throne. Are you with me? And we are told that therefore the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's head. Prayer ascended up as an offering. Now your prayer will never be, will never ascend up if it is not acceptable to God. Are you with me? It doesn't even reach that state. For it to reach that stage of acceptance before God as an offering or a sacrifice, you yourself must be acceptable first. Because Isaiah 9 says, your sins have hidden God's face. Your iniquities have separated you from God. Why is God not answering? We have been praying. In fact, in Isaiah 58, the Israelites fasted. They did not just pray on They fasted. And then they began to complain. Why is it that we have fasted and the Lord did not notice? God was like, you are fasting, but you are not fasting in a manner that is in accordance to my way of fasting. I will admit, that is why I am not answering you. The fasting that you are making, yes, you have made one, but it doesn't meet my standard of an acceptable fasting. Hallelujah. Prayer. Sacrifice. Sacrifice that we offer to God. For it to be acceptable must meet the standard of an acceptable prayer. One of the key issues is yourself. That is why in the book of Peter, I think verse Peter, chapter number 3, verse number 7, 8, whereby 
God is speaking about men that they ought to treat their, their, their wives well. He goes to an extent of saying that if you do not treat them well, your prayers won't be acceptable before God. You hear that? So any man, if he entreats his wife, no matter how much he can pray, prayer won't be acceptable before the Lord. I will admit, it does not meet the standard that God has set for me. Let's hope in this place we are going to have men that will offer prayers that are acceptable before God. Why? Because they know that if they do not treat their wives the way in which they should, even their prayer before the Lord is an abomination. It's a, it's a distasteful thing before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 19, 12 to 14. Psalms 19, 12 to 14. The people that uh, are reading for me, I think they forget the times that we are working together, please. Psalms 19, 12 to 14. But, but who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of, meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Twelve, who can, ask, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. David is praying to God. God, please cleanse me from secret faults. Cleanse me, Lord, from secret faults. Meaning that there are things the first part, who can understand his errors? Who can understand his errors? God, cleanse me even from secret faults. Things that are hidden, nobody knows but you. David is saying, Lord, cleanse me. And if you have done that, Lord, I shall be upright before you. I shall be innocent before you. I shall be acceptable before you. Are you with me? And then he says, keep me from willful sins. What is a willful sin? The one that you commit knowing very well that this thing that you are doing is wrong, willful. Are you with me? You are not taken by surprise. You decide to do it knowing very well that it is wrong. Willful sin. May God deliver us. May God deliver us. Are you with me? May the Lord deliver us from willful. Because Verse number 14. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Jesus, when he spoke in Matthew 15, when the Pharisees were complaining unto him, saying that, why is it that your disciples eat without washing hands? Because it was a ritual in Israel that 
you must wash your hands in a certain way. I with me before you can eat. So they saw the disciples of Jesus eating without performing that particular ritual in Matthew 15. Verse 18 and 19, Jesus is responding, telling them, by the way, you guys do not understand that even though you are paying attention to the outer part, you neglect the inside, which is the most critical part. Because from it comes envy, comes murder, comes adultery, comes fornication from your heart. So you guys, you are cleaning the outer part, but you neglect the most critical one. How many of us appear before men innocent, holy, yet our inner part is divided? If anyone will have envy, jealousy, it's from that. That's where everything starts. That's why David says, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted with people. May they be accepted with people. Lord, so that whatsoever may bring before you will be accepted with you. Am I speaking to somebody? Luke 18, 28 to 30. Luke 18, 28 to 30. Look, we have left our homes to follow you. Yes, Jesus said to them, and I assure you that anyone who leaves home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will receive much more in this present age and eternal life in the age to come. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus was talking here about the issue of sacrificing something in order to be with him. Remember, when we talk about the issue of sacrificing, that you are giving something before the Lord. Are you with me? Now here, he is talking about the issue of sacrificing something. In other words, the issue of giving up something so that you can be with the Lord. Are you with me? You hear that there is a difference between these two forms of sacrifices. All of them are sacrifices that we must do. That we must pray. Are you with me? Now Peter is saying, Lord, we have sacrificed everything so that we may be with you. We have left all to be with you. What is it that we will gain? Hey. Hallelujah. And then Jesus responded, Peter. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children for the kingdom of God's sake. In other words, there is no person that has forsaken everything for my sake. Who is not going to receive such things in this kingdom, I mean in this age, and into the age to come? In other words, you cannot sacrifice for nothing for God. Whatsoever sacrifice that you are going to make before the Lord, the Lord is going to reward you for it. The Lord will go into, is going to reward you for it. That is why the word of the Lord says, do not get tired of doing good. For in 
job season you are going to reap are you with me so there is no sacrifice that you are going to make for the lord and not be repaid for you because the lord has committed himself it is jesus saying that verily i say unto you Whenever Jesus uses the words truly, truly, very, very, he signifies the importance of that statement that he's making. I will think that it says it's not by just respond and say, do this, do that. But there are those moments where he say, very, very, I say, those that believe. Those that live all for my sake will surely be repaid. Hallelujah. Now he is committing himself. Let's go on now. Luke 14 33. Sacrifice of giving up. Remember, we are talking about real keys to God's blessing. Sacrifice. Sacrificing. 1433. In the same way, concluded Jesus, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything you have. Did you hear that? Repeat, sister. They didn't hear. In the same way, concluded Jesus, none of you can be my disciples unless you give up everything you have. Peter, in Luke 18, 28, he said, Lord, we have forsaken all to be with you. Jesus, in this scripture, he says, in the same way, there is no one who can be with me unless he leaves all to be with me. In other words, the issue of sacrifice of giving up things so that you can be with Jesus it's a requirement are you with me it's a requirement of walking with him of being with him of being his it's a requirement that is why it says here, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. Simple. Jesus is saying that someone that I will consider as my disciple is someone that will forsake, give up everything so that he can be with me. If you do not do that, he says, that person is not my disciple. He cannot be my disciple. That night in Luke 18, he spoke about the reward that you are definitely going to be rewarded. Hallelujah. You are going to be rewarded. Now, when you look at the apostles, they left everything and went with Jesus. Perhaps before you get there, in Luke chapter 18, there is a rich man there that came to Jesus and said, Lord, what is it that I must do so that I can have part in your kingdom, so that I can have eternal life? Luke 18, from 18 to 23. Then Jesus said, he, first of all, he asked him, do you know the commandments that thou shall not murder, thou shall not steal, uh, thou shall not commit adultery? The, the man said, those I have kept from my youth. In other words, I have kept all those. And then Jesus said, in verse number 22, now when Jesus heard these things, in other words, the man's response that he has kept all these commandments. Jesus said to him, Yet lackest thou one thing, 
Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. 23. And when he had this, the young rich man had this. He was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Other words, he was not willing to give up his riches and share them. Remember Jesus said, go and sell them and give to the poor. Share with them. Then you can come and follow me. Jesus said that. And the man was very sorry. He was very disappointed. He's not ready to give up. He was not ready to give up. Are we ready to sacrifice things so that we may be with Jesus? Because he has said, whosoever does not forsake. Jesus said to this man, yet you lack one thing. Yet you lack one thing. Go and give up everything that you have. Go and sell and then distribute to the poor. When you read in Acts 2, from verse 42 to 45, you hear about the ancient that they meant then in fellowship of the word, prayers and breaking of bread. And then the word of God continues to say that they that had possessions of lands, they sold it and then brought the receipt of that to the apostles and it was shared to each according to their need. What were they doing? What Jesus said. Go and sell and then distribute to the poor that come and follow. And the word of the Lord says that there is none that led among them. There is no one that left anything among those people. How did they each they achieve that? Because those that possessed, they understood that we have been blessed materially so that we can bless those that do not have material things. Are you with me? And blessings. Whenever the Lord blesses you, He blesses you so that you can be a blessing to other people. Are you with me? The Lord doesn't just bless you. For you only. That is why when Jesus speaks about the kingdom of God, he says the kingdom of God is like this cinnamon seed of this particular tree. This tree has got the smallest seed, but once it is planted, it grows and becomes the tallest of them all. Then all the birds come and build their nest on it. Speaking about the benefit of people that are around you as a result of you being with God. That people must be blessed because you are blessed. People must be blessed because you are a blessing yourself. And when you don't demonstrate the trait of this tree. You are failing the kingdom of God. 
Are you with me? You are failing the kingdom of God. You are failing God. Because God expects you to be a blessing. Am I speaking to somebody? Whenever God gives you, He gives you so that you may give. That is why to this rich man He said, Go and sell and then distribute to the poor. In other words, you have been given all this material so that you may give to the poor, to the need. You remember in the previous week, we read the word of God went by, it says that he that gives to the rich and the one that oppresses the poor in order to gain riches, they will both come to poverty. Remember that scripture that we read? The Lord said that he that gives to the rich and he that oppresses the poor so that he may gain riches, they will both come to poverty. In other words, there is no blessing there. That is why Jesus went on as far as saying that even when we make dinner, we must not just invite our friends only, but we must invite the needy, the lame, the neglected. Then we will be blessed because if we invite our friends only, they will repay us. And therefore God has got no part there because we have already received our, our, our reward. When these people repay you by inviting you, repay you by doing you the same thing that you have done for them. That is why Jesus said in Matthew 25, in the last day, he will say to some, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was homeless, did not invite me in. I was sick in the hospital, he did not visit me. And they will ask him, when did we see the Lord? And he will say, as, as much as you did not do it to any of these, referring to people that we need, you didn't do it to me. And to those that would have heeded his call that invite the poor, sell and share, give to the needy, not to the rich, he will say to them, I was hungry, you fed me. I was sick, you visited me in hospital. I was homeless. You invited me in. And then they will ask him, when did we see you, Lord, naked and clothed you? And you will say unto them, surely, as much as you did it unto this, you will do it to me. Hallelujah. I believe that I am speaking to people here who have got a desire of receiving eternal life. Remember, Jesus' response to Peter, he said, surely, you will receive those things here and eternal life in the world to come. When you forsake everything for my sake. I will wait to forsake everything for his sake. I will ready to give up all for this sake. It will not help us to be prosperous according to the world standards. As Jesus said that, how will it benefit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his life? To not help us. Yes, people may say, all those things about you that you are prosperous when they look at you because of whatsoever possessions or gains that you would have made of material things but if you neglect this most important issue you would have failed where it matters most you would have failed where it matters most. Hallelujah. 
So let us not fail when it matters most. As believers, there are so many of us that succeed in doing other things but fail when it matters most. Fail when it comes to serving God. Fail when it comes to giving ourselves completely to God. Remember the man in Mark chapter 9 verse 24 when Jesus in verse 23 said that all things are possible to the one that believes. The man in verse 24 responded and said Lord I believe but please help me to overcome my unbelief. Lord I have given up everything but there are certain things that I am still entangled on. Please help me Lord to give up even such things. Lord, please help me up to forsake even these things that I am still entangled with, that I am still carrying, that I should have given up. Yes, I've given up certain things, but there are certain things. There are certain things that are still holding me back. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to give them up. Help me, Lord, to get rid of them. Help me, Lord, to give them up. Remember, the man by the name of Saul, he was sure that he was going to please the Lord by the sacrifice of those things that he was about to offer before the Lord. Neglecting, forgetting that there are things that are in him that ought not to be there. And as a result of that, the Lord was not going to accept that sacrifice. The Lord was not going to accept that sacrifice. May the words of my mouth, my meditations as well, Lord, be acceptable to God. May my sacrifice, which is my body, Lord, that you have commanded me to sacrifice before you, in Romans 21, may it be acceptable. May it be accepted, my Lord. The last scripture, then we'll pray. Second Corinthians 2, verse number 15. Second Corinthians 2, verse number 15. For we are like sweet smelling incense offered by Christ to God which spreads among those who are being saved and those who are being lost. Hallelujah. For we are like a sweet smelling incense, which is offered unto God by Christ. Me and you are like sweet smelling incense. That is offered by Christ. Remember, Romans 12 said, Let us be sacrifices that are holy and acceptable like to God. Because this is our true way of worship. This is our sincere worship. Then where we are it? The way the Lord says, for we are a sweet 
aroma unto God that is being offered by Christ. That is what we are. May we remain such in our entire walk with God. May we remain such in our entire walk with God. And if we are to attain that eternal life that the word of God speaks about, we must remain sweet smell sacrifices. Because that means we are acceptable before God. If we are not a sweet smelling incense before the Lord, it means that instead of the Lord accepting you, He rejects you. Remember in the book of Samuel to so the Lord said, because you have rejected the Lord, the Lord has rejected you. You want to be a sweet smell, sacrifice before the Lord. You want the Lord to help you to overcome certain things. You want the Lord to help you to give up certain things that you are still holding on. And this is your prayer. Falling in love with Jesus.